Hey friends, in today's explainer, we're going to explore the fundamentals in dosimetric quantities and units used to measure radiation. Try to contain your excitement. Now, dose quantities and units can get quite overwhelming with terms like gray, sieverts, Röntgen, activity, exposure, kerma, absorbed dose, equivalent dose, effective dose. There's a lot. And honestly, who can keep up? So let's all calm down and try to understand what's actually going on here. Because by the end of this video, I'll make sure that you know the basics and you know what each of these terms mean. Before we delve into the various units, it's crucial to understand that they fall into two main categories, radiation exposure and radiation dose. But what exactly is the difference? Radiation exposure refers to the amount of ionizing radiation an object or a person is subjected to, and we measure it by the radiation traveling through air. That is the amount of ionization induced charge particles produced in a unit mass of air when exposed to x-rays or gamma rays, which quantifies the total amount of radiation energy absorbed. The way radiation exposure is calculated is the sum of all electric charges, that is when the radiation induced release electrons in a specific volume of air are completely stopped, all that divided by the mass of the volume of air. The SI unit of exposure is in coulombs per kilogram, and this is no surprise since coulombs is the SI unit of charge and kilogram is the SI unit of mass. However, there is an older unit called the Röntgen, represented as R, of course named after Wilhelm Röntgen who discovered x-rays. But this is an older term not really used anymore, where one Röntgen is equal to 2.58 times 10 to the 4 coulombs per kilogram, so nothing much really. Now I know some of you hate numbers and panicked a little when I mentioned that conversion, but let me tell you something. We have this magical little tool called Google. Use it. Don't need to remember anything here. And it pretty much goes for all constants and conversions, okay? I mentioned earlier that radiation dose is measured in a specific volume of air. But why air? Why not measure exposure directly interacting with human tissue? Well, it's a limitation of our equipment, as it can only really measure exposure in air, which we then take and relate to absorbed dose. Now, interestingly, the effective atomic number of air actually closely matches that of muscle and water. And it's this similarity that allows us to perform dosimetric experiments and measurements in air, providing insights into what occurs in the human body. Now, radiation dose, on the other hand, is a measure of the absorbed radiation energy per unit mass of tissue. It takes into account the radiation exposure and the specific properties of tissues exposed to the radiation, the unit used to express radiation dose is the gray, or sieverts depending on the type, where gray represents the absorption of one joule of radiation energy per kilogram of tissue. There are a variety of dose quantities that exist because each represents a different aspect of radiation dose. We have three key categories, absorbed dose, equivalent dose, and effective dose. Here's a very brief description of each. Absorbed dose measures the radiation level imparted within tissue. It quantifies the amount of energy absorbed by the tissue, and the SI unit for absorbed dose is the gray, abbreviated as GY. Equivalent dose takes into consideration the type of radiation involved in the exposure, as different types of radiation have very biological effects. And the SI unit for equivalent dose is the sievert, denoted as SV. Effective dose builds upon equivalent dose by applying a weighting factor based on the sensitivity of organs being exposed to radiation. It takes into account the specific risk posed by each organ. And like equivalent dose, the unit of effective dose is the sievert, or more commonly millisieverts given how small the doses are. Remember, all of these quantities and units are defined and originate from the ICRP, the International Commission of Radiological Protection which I recommend you have a copy saved for your reference. I'll link it down below for you. You're welcome. Now, what about radiation activity? It's a bit different to exposure because it's referring to the radiation decay from a radioactive source. Activity is basically the rate of decay and is measured in the SI units becquerels, where one becquerel is one disintegration per second. Now, the older SI unit used to be called the Curie, named after Madame Curie, where one Curie equates to 37 billion becquerels, or more scientifically put as 3.7 times 10 to the 10. That's a lot of disintegrations. All right, what do we have left? Kerma, that's right. So this is an interesting one because it seems to confuse a lot of people. And if you're one of them, it's okay. First, let's understand what it stands for. Kerma is an acronym for kinetic energy released in mass, or matter, as some people say. And it's a fundamental concept in radiation physics used to quantify the energy transferred from ionizing radiation to a material or medium. It provides information about the amount of energy deposited by radiation per unit mass in a given material or tissue. The Kerma quantity is expressed in units of gray and is denoted as K. And it's particularly important when we go from the initial X-ray photon to absorb dose. But more on that in the next video. All right, that's it for this explainer. I hope you now have a good understanding of the basics. These are the fundamentals that we build on so much later when we talk about radiation dose and how that eventually leads to more biological damage. Now give the video a like if you got any value from it. Go on. 
it doesn't hurt. Now in the next video, I'm gonna be discussing the different types of radiation doses that is absorbed, equivalent, and effective dose. So make sure you don't miss out on that one as it's an important one. See you there.